Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. Welcome to today's live broadcast going out on Facebook, hopefully, and uh, YouTube. So today we have um, a couple of guests who are going to join us. So let's bring them on screen and say hi to them. Hi, Emily and Brandy, or I should say Brandy and Emily to get you in the right order. <laughs> How's, Hello. Good. How's it going? It's going good, how are you? Very well, very well. So um, just to give a bit of background on both of you, perhaps you can give yourselves the 30 second introduction from each of you. Sure, do you want to start? <laughs> sure, um, I'm Brandy Nicole. I am a portrait and fine art photographer based in Brooklyn. We are actually in our home studio right now. Um, Emily is my roommate and she is also a photographer. Uh, it just so happens Brandy is also my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> Fun, funny that, yep. <laughs> uh, my name is Emily Teague. I am a fashion photographer currently based in Brooklyn, um, but formerly from California. Cool, and I'm just gonna bring up on the screen. I know you guys can't see it probably, um, but I'm just rolling a couple of little animated overlays of uh, you two in action and uh, this is for the recent uh, Ellen Crom came campaign as I understand so maybe you can tell us a bit about that as well yeah so a couple months ago um, Ellen Crom asked us to be a part of their ELC 125 and 500 campaign okay. uh, which just came out last month which is exciting um, and so we got to shoot that in our home studio and kind of use like a small space but in totally different ways because we have really different styles perfect Excellent, all right, and then what you're gonna do for us today, um, so who's gonna go first? You're gonna do a couple of edits, that right? So I'm gonna go. Emily's <laughs> gonna go up first. Okay, and we're gonna also poll the audience as well. So a poll will pop up at, at, at some point, and your question, Emily, that you wanted to ask was, um, any of you guys out there shooting fashion? So it's gonna be a yes or no answer, as I understand. So when that poll comes up on screen at some point, um, then you guys can answer that. And so, and Brandy's got a question for you coming up later as well. So let's bring up your screen. So you need to hide my Skype, I think, in the background, yep. otherwise we're gonna break the internet. <laughs> So we should, you are. <laughs> we should be able to see your uh, screen up there now. And I'm going to keep an eye on the comments and questions. And then if anything comes in, I'll interrupt you and uh, see what we can do. So um, yeah, tell us about this shot, Emily. Yeah, so this is actually one of the images from the Ellen Chrome campaign um, shot here in the studio. I built an entire set for this one, which was really fun. Cool. Um, and I thought this would be a good one to go over. So right now we're looking at the raw file, so straight out of camera. Um, but this was originally my first edit. Um, so you, I'm going to go back and forth just a couple of times so you can see the difference. So you can see my work is pretty dramatic, moody. Um, I really like to have these like fierce feminine images. Um, so going back just a couple more times, you can see her jawbone is getting really nice and dark. I'm still keeping um, this nice highlight here, if you can see my cursor. And I'm just adding in some nice color as well. So what I'm going to do today is kind of just recreate this and all of my edits, um, if I try to recreate something, it might be a little bit different just based on my mood or, or what I'm feeling about the image in that day. So we'll see um, how close it is today. It's, it's the same for me, Emily. I can never match an, uh, an edit twice <laughs> day yeah, after day, right. so it's quite normal. Yeah. So starting over here, um, I have my layer area. Right now I'm on my background, but I'm just going to go and create a new filled layer. And I will rename this overall edit. Um, I will warn you, I am awful with my layer names um, and they can range quite a bit. So there's no uh, set way that I do that. And then I'm just gonna go through my workflow. We're working on my computer. So when Brandy's doing this, um, she might have a different workflow, but normally when I'm going down, I'm starting with my white balance. Looking at this image, things look okay for me. Um, I do tend to shoot quite a bit warmer. And so if this was an image shot outside, I would be pulling up my warmth a little bit. But again, things are looking okay for me here. I'm gonna go down to my exposure tab. It's a little bit bright for me and my images do tend to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna pull this down just slightly. And as I'm doing this, I'm looking at the image. Even, even this is a little too much. So right around there. I will say all throughout my edit, I'm making really small gradual changes. I think all those small changes add up to make something really nice that doesn't look too edited. So that's looking good. I'm gonna go to my contrast. I'm always bringing up my contrast just a little bit. Right about there is looking good for me. So you can see I'm staying normally like within zero to 10. So again, small gradual changes. 
my brightness is affecting my midtones. So I'm going to pull this up and down just so you guys can see what this is doing. If we go down again, affecting midtones, affecting midtones. Um, I'm just going to leave that at zero, though. We don't need to play with that guy. For my saturation, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. About negative eight is looking good for me. And I, I do this because I like my images to look a little more muted in saturation. Um, there's no right or wrong way to edit. So this is just my style. <laughs> Skipping down to my high dynamic range tool. So previously there was a, a highlight and shadow tool, um, which there still is, but now in Capture 120, they've added in the white and black slider, which is a really nice change. So if we split this up into two sections, we have our highlights and our shadow which is just affecting um, detail recovery. And then we have our white and our black. So two different sides um, of, of the range that if we pull them, it, it's kind of fine tuning our contrast. So with my highlight, I'm gonna pull this down just a little bit. And in my street photography, my photojournalism, I'm often pulling this down quite a bit. This image doesn't need it too much though. And I'm just looking, I'm looking at the brighter points where highlights are. We don't have anything blown out here. so right about negative six is looking good for me. Going down to my shadows, I'm going to pull this all the way just so we can see what it's affecting. And, and that looks horrible. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to take my shadows and I'm going to do just about negative four. And so it's kind of affecting these areas right here, right around her leg, right around her arm, these areas in her hair, just those shadows. With my white and my black, again, this is affecting the contrast. So I'm going to take my white, I'm going to pull it up just a little bit. And this is similar to my highlights, um, but this is only affecting the brightest areas of the highlights in the image. Um, as for my black, um, if I pull this down a bit, it's going to give a really nice punch um, without clipping. So I'm going to pull that down just a bit. And even that's too much for me, right about eight. So again, gradual, gradual changes. If I want to see what I've done just with my high dynamic range tool, I can hold the option alt key on Mac, click my reset right here, and I can see just what I'm doing to this tool. Versus if I want to see what I've done both with my high dynamic range, my exposure, everything I've done so far, I can go up to my reset tool up here. And depending on your workspace, it might look different. Hold my option key. And now I can see everything I've done to this image so far. So you can see I'm making it quite a bit darker, adding in some nice contour to her face. Skipping down to my levels. So we have our highlights on this end, our shadows on this end, and our midtones right in the middle. Uh, I'm going to take my highlights and bring it in just a bit. And, and you can see, um, again, I shoot very dark. So I have a lot of shadows in here, not so much on, on our brightness, but taking that over just a little bit. And the areas I'm looking at, I'm looking at her face here, I'm looking at her jacket, and even that little change is making a big difference. So let's see what we've done so far. And that's looking really nice. I'm going to take my shadows and I'm just going to raise it up just a little bit to make it a little bit darker. Even two is looking good for me. And to even this out a little bit, I'm going to take my midtones. I'm going to pull it slightly to the left, watching the image as I do this. And Let's see what that's done. So it's giving it some nice contrast, evening it out a bit. I think that's looking good for levels. Let's go down to our curve. So curve, we have our RGB curve, um, red, green, blue, or we have Luma curve. So normally I'm working in Luma curve um, just because with our RGB curve, it's affecting the colors as well. Um, but with Luma, it's just affecting contrast, which is nice. Um, for this one, I'm actually going to add another layer because I tend to pull too much within my curve and it can make some really dramatic changes. So I'm going to go and create another filled layer. I'll just call this curves. And let's create two control points. So let's create one in our shadows, one in our highlights, and I'm just going to create a really mild S curve pulling down slightly. And you can see it's quite a lot uh, because I have a heavy hand <laughs> and pulling up slightly with our highlights. And, and that's way too much for me, but because I've done it too much and I knew I was going to, I can just go to this layer, my curves layer, go to my opacity right here and start lowering this. So if you do have a heavy hand like me, the opacity on layers can be really helpful to adjust. Let's bring it way down and let's see what we're doing. Let's go right about 40. If I just do this little check mark, I can see what I've done just with that layer. 
And that's looking really lovely to me. So I feel pretty good there. I'm actually going to lower it just to 35. And that's feeling good. One more time, I'm going to go see what I've done to this entire image so far. So holding my Option Alt key on Mac, I'm going to go to Reset. And I can see everything I've done to this image. So I do notice um, I'm going pretty dark. And I think once I'm done doing all my adjustments, I'll go back and kind of change that. But for now, let's skip down to our clarity. So with clarity, um, if I'm doing photojournalism, street photography, anything like that, I'm often changing both my clarity and my structure. Uh, for something like fashion or portrait, though, um, especially in the studio, I really don't want to do much with this um, because my retoucher um, will probably hate me because it might just add some, too much detail. So pulling in, you guys can see that. Hopefully you can see that clearly on your screen. I have a ton of detail already. If I was to pull up with my clarity and my structure, it's just adding too much. So I'm just going to leave that at zero. Uh, vignetting, normally, again, street photography, I would add this, or even if I'm shooting someone outside, but I already have some natural vignetting going on, so I'm just going to leave that there and not, not even deal with this. But I can just close it if I want. Um, I can also just remove the tool. So right-click, add or remove tool. This is a really nice way to change your, your workspace. So looking at this, I feel really good. I am going to go back to, let's see. David, for you, oh, I see, okay. So going back, to my, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Did you lose um, something? <laughs> yeah, I, I like looked up and was like, oh no. <laughs> um, so that was because I was on my curves layer and now I'm going back to my overall edit layer. So going back down here, I'm gonna take my blacks. Um, and it looks like I went down just a little bit too much. I'm gonna pull up slightly to about four. Let's see now. Yeah, that's looking really lovely to me. Uh, final thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip over to my color tab and how are we doing on time, Brandy? Um, we're almost there. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Don't worry. <laughs> we're on nine minutes, so I'll try to speed this up. Um, but color is really, really important to me. So sometimes, depending on the image, I might play around with white balance. Again, I'm not going to do anything with that right now. I'm just going to focus on my color balance tool and a little bit of the color editor. So looking at color balance, we have master. We have three-way, which is just showing our shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. Um, and then, of course, we have our shadow, <laughs> mid-tone, and highlight. So with, with master, this is just giving the image a nice overall grade. And I'm just going to pull this all the way to the edge, showing full saturation. And I'm going to move it around to see what starts feeling good. There's no one correct color. Um, mostly, I look at my images, and I just kind of feel around to see what feels good to me. I want this image to have a really nice, regal, rich feel. And so for me, that's like normally within a cooler color right about there is starting to feel kind of rich and regal. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to go to this <laughs> slider over here. This is my saturation slider. I'm going to drag this guy down. And if I drag it all the way up, this is full saturation. If I drag it all the way down, this is 0%. So I'm going to slowly start going up right about there. And it's a very small adjustment, especially with color. I don't want to go overboard. So that's feeling pretty good. I might pull it down even a little bit more because I'm also going to be affecting my shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. So that feels good for master. If I want to see what I've done so far, again, option key, hold reset. And that's looking, just adding in a little bit of flare. Let's go over to my shadows. Shadows, similarly, I'm going to keep it within these cooler tones. So anywhere from like this nice, rich purple up to greens. Let's drag around there and see what feels nice. That's looking pretty good. I'm also like in purple right about there. I'm going to pull that saturation down. And Brandy just informed me that I'm going over time, so I'm going to speed up. <laughs> Has she got a stopwatch uh, in the background? <laughs> Midtone. Um, my midtones and my highlights, I'm going to make a little bit warmer um, to kind of complement that cooler tone that I had for my shadows and master. Something around there. And I'm going to pull this way down for my midtones. Highlight similar, keeping it a little bit more yellow. This is affecting her skin tone nicely, pulling it way down. And I've got my luminosity slider over here. Let's pull that up a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. Lastly, and I'll go over this super quick because I am over time, um, color editor. This can be really nice for skin. Um, if she had a little bit too much red in her skin, I can go to my basic color editor, go to my, my reds, affect the hue and saturation. Um, you can also do a global adjustment. Advanced, I'm mostly only doing that if there's a single color I want to use. And skin tone can be really nice to even that out as well. 
but I will end it there because I am definitely over time. <laughs> <laughs> David, I'm going to pull you back up if that sounds okay. Uh, don't pull me back up for the second. Uh, nope, I'm just going to put on uh, just a comment from Joshua Simmons said small and gradual oh, changes are the best. <laughs> so I thought you'd like okay, to, to hear from him <laughs> for sure. Uh, we did have a question which uh, Carlos was asking. Uh, what's the difference between clarity and sharpening? I can always answer it if uh, if you don't want so to. So between clarity, clarity and, and sharpening, yeah. Clarity and sharpening, or clarity and structure? Cla well, clarity, yeah. Let's let's go for clarity and structure because structure is a is a kind of sharpening in a way. So, and, and David, I'm going to let you jump in here too. I want to say so. Structure is affecting our edges more, correct? Yes, exactly. Um, and clarity, give me a definition for clarity. Clarity, it's a, it's a contrast adjustment, but mid-tones only. So you can kind of push it a bit harder. Like on your shot, for example, if you push contrast too much, you lose all the definition in her hair and, and so on. Whereas clarity, you could be a bit more aggressive with it as, as well. And then you wouldn't lose your shadow and highlight detail. So. David, I'm going to say that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> nice. That's good. Uh, let's take that one off. OK, so I think now uh, it's time for Brandy. OK. I'm going to get out. Yeah. Yes, I will get out. give you yeah. my chair. <laughs> and uh, we're going to introduce your poll as well. So Brandy, you wanted to ask, um, and you can tell a little bit about yourself when we ask this, but your poll was, yeah. uh, have you tried self-portraiture, yes or no? Because you're going to edit the self-portrait, as I understand. I sure am. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think right now is an awesome time to try out self-portrait if you haven't yet. Um, I mean, we really only have ourselves. So exactly. I, <laughs> it's yeah. not like you can get, get a family or friend <laughs> yeah. over or anything like that. So unless you live with them, of course. Yeah, yeah. unless you live with uh, a roommate, that would be nice enough to model it yeah. for you. Um, has it happened yet? Oh, <laughs> and, and by the way, the polls the polls are coming up on, on Facebook, but uh, we'll add them on YouTube afterwards because we can't sort of do an interactive YouTube poll immediately. It's a bit limited, but they, they go up on Facebook. So if you're on YouTube wondering where on earth the poll is, uh, it will come up uh, once the recording go live as well. OK. Alrighty. Um, so uh, like I mentioned before, I am a fine art and portrait photographer. I shoot a lot of self-portraits. Um, I actually just shot this um, series a few days ago. Um, my friend brought me some um, flowers from outside and I'm like oh my gosh this is amazing gotta take some portraits um so I will go over my capture one workflow um it was funny because originally I thought me and Emily had a very similar editing style and that we did similar things in capture one and after watching her I'm like okay actually we do um some things really different so that's exciting um <laughs> Uh, this is the raw image, and this is after my adjustment. So as you can see over here, these are my Capture One layers um, and kind of what I'll be walking through with you guys right now. Um, I love Capture One, first off, for tethering. Um, it's such a powerful tool while I'm um, doing self-portraits especially. So what I'll do is I'll set up my camera, have my computer, um, my laptop right in front of me just out of camera, um, and have it shoot nine frames a second so I can kind of keep an eye on it. And also I love the fact that it has exposure warning and focus mask because with these things turned on, it looks crazy, um, <laughs> but with these things turned on while I am shooting self portraits, I know that um, at the end of the day, especially I need glasses, like uh, without my glasses when I'm taking these photos, I'm like, I have no idea if this is in focus. So um, this is so helpful. Um, so if you are getting into self portraits, I highly recommend um, trying to tether and capture one and use those tools. Um, how, how are you triggering your camera, by the way, Brandy? Because obviously oh, you're not yeah. like on top of the camera, so you need to trigger no, it Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. So up until about uh, last year, um, well, I guess, so I shoot Nikon, first of all. Um, some Nikons have a remote trigger that's like 20 bucks or so. Um, so I used to have that one. But when I upgraded my camera, um, that trigger no longer existed. Um, so I now shoot with a D850. 
The only way I've found um, to trigger the camera via remote is actually through a radio remote. Um, uh-huh. I'm, I'm forgetting like the name of it, but it's meant to trigger multiple cameras. Like a pocket uh-huh. wizard or something like that, I guess. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so that has been a lifesaver because before that, I would literally get up and like hit the button and then like run back and play. <laughs> not, like, not very relaxing. Years, it, no. years. <laughs> Crazy. Um, so yeah, also get one of those cause it is life changing. So, um, anywho, so that is my tether a little bit. Now I'll jump into editing. So on my background layer, I do a couple things. Uh, first of all, I like to, um, do my white, white balance right on the background. I know that the door and the wig is white. So that just will automatically change, um, everything I need to make sure that skin tones are normal. I will also, it's funny because Emily was like, I never use <laughs> clarity and structure. Um, I do a little bit um, and that this is mostly out of habit, but also because um, I, I always want to make sure things are super sharp and I'll also go in and soften things like skin if it's over sharp. Um, but I just bring it up just a little bit. Maybe that is good. I like using my loop tool on the eye just to make sure And eyes looking crazy right now. Um, but yes, that looks great. Now I'm gonna jump into my layers. Um, I will do a new filled layer and start with a curve. Um, My style is pretty light, bright, airy. Um, I really like to um, make things as essentially as bright as possible without going too overexposed. So how I do this is actually with my RGB curve, I'll bring down the overall highlights just a little um say about there there's no like real method or um recipe for this it's kind of just looking at the photo and seeing like is this too much is this too little um i'll bring up my midtones. i think that looks great i'll stop this curve somewhere around here and actually bring back in my highlights just a little bit um the great thing about having this curve on a layer is that one i can uncheck and recheck see what's happening Um, and if I think it's too much, then I can just bring down the opacity. I spend so much time doing this. (laughs) This is like such a playground for me, um, trying to figure out what opacity and, um, things like that. I will always almost overdo something in a layer and then just mess with the opacity just to see, um, what exactly it's doing. So I'll stop somewhere around there. Um, I'll probably do my next step, which is a new filled layer for skin tones. Um, I'll rename it skin, keep things nice and organized here, head over to my color layers here. Um, where are we? I'm also editing on (laughs) Emily's computer. So I'm like all turned around. Here we go. So in our color editor, skin tone, um, if you're not familiar with this tool, it is life changing. Um, this is actually maybe one of my worst images to demonstrate this tool (laughs) also because the skin tone is relatively even um but usually i will have like hands up near faces and hands get really red um really pink um sometimes if it's too cold too hot skin tones just get blotchy um and this is a perfect tool to kind of like make it more uniform so what we'll do is get this eyedropper choose a nice skin tone somewhere around here um and you can see what skin tone that is right here. And then I'll just slowly drag up these uniformity. If you can see, um, it's just kind of fun to see what each one does. And then, like I said, there's no recipe, just kind of playing and seeing which one um, or how much to add. And once again, I do kind of like to overdo it a little bit and then bring it back in this opacity. Also unchecking, rechecking, very, very subtle. Um, I do, I've probably said this like three times at least, but everything I'm doing in Capture One is really subtle. Um, I don't like to do anything crazy, anything um, way different than the image. Um, It's just my personal preference, I guess, unless I'm making things like purple, um, which does happen sometimes. Um, okay, so one of my last steps in Capture One is um, eyes. I like to sharpen um, and brighten eyes in Capture One. I think it's really easy here. So we'll, I'll actually make a new empty layer this time. Rename this eyes. 
Am I doing okay on time? Yep, you are doing great. <laughs> Check up on her with the stopwatch. Yep. <laughs> wow, that's great. Okay, um, this is gonna look really crazy. Um, because what I'm gonna do, um, usually I would go ahead and mask out skin. By the way, um, you'll kind of notice that the lips actually got affected a little bit. Um, I'm pointing like you can see. Um, <laughs> The lips kind of got affected in the skin, but that's kind of what I was going for with this particular look. Everything is really muted, um, really natural makeup. Um, so if I'm uh, wanting to adjust something and just that one thing and not have it affect anywhere else in the in the image, I'll mask it. So for this, I will go ahead and mask it. This is gonna look crazy. I did this yesterday. I was like, wow, uh, red eye. So I'm gonna turn into a robot right now. There we go. Beautiful. Um, I will go to my clarity. I like to bring up structure and just the eye a little bit. I'm also going to zoom in a little bit more so you can see. Um, that's great. Um, also, what I like to do, there's a number of ways you can do this in Capture One or anything. Um, I like to brighten with um, levels, actually. And it looks like, oh, here we are. Once again, using Emily's computer, a little tick on. I'll bring up my midtones to make it a little brighter. I'll bring my shadows way in. That makes a huge difference, um, if you can see. And then I'll also take my overall highlights, especially if there's a big giant softbox in it. Um, I'll get grab those highlights and make those a little brighter too. And once again, toggle and see if it is too much. Um, that is making a huge difference. I would also recommend zooming way out because you can easily overdo eyes. Um, it's also a huge pet peeve of mine when eyes are crazy contrast, like 100 contrast, and then everything else is really soft. So really try to make sure that you are being subtle. Um, somewhere around here, I think, is perfect. Um, yeah, so that's mostly what I would do to all of my images. Um, there is one thing I did to this image in particular that is just special. And that is, um, I changed this green or made it a little less saturated because I'm not a huge fan of green in my photos. <laughs> You'll probably not find it anywhere in my in my feed. So I will rename this um, green or leaves or whatever just to help us identify what it is that we're doing. Head over to the color tab. Go to the advanced color editor. This is super powerful tool. Um, for changing colors. Um, I'm going to get this eyedropper here, select this green color, and say, please bring it down because it is too much. And I think that is so nice. Um, let me just toggle, make sure it's not too weird. Sometimes I'll even make greens a little bit more blue because I can. Yeah. And I think that looks nice. Um, I think getting rid of the green helped the blue of the eye really. Um, jump out too and that's really it that's that's yeah super simple work. <laughs> oh am i at 10 minutes i yes i'm so proud <laughs> i'm over okay i thought i was going to be done in like five so this is great <laughs> well done uh just a comment from dan he said skin tone adjustment is a lifesaver for newborn photography uh, which oh, i can imagine I yeah um bet. And as you've discovered, you know, skin skin tone does vary anyway. And the fact that you can just equalize it a little bit always helps as, as well. Um, we put in the comments your guys' um, Instagram and uh, handles. Sorry for both Emily and, and Brandy as well. So if people want to find yeah. you guys, uh, then we can do so. Where's Emily yeah. gone? Has she run off now? <laughs> oh, sorry. We'll just, do the switch I'll, I'll, I'll bring her back in the frame. <laughs> David, can I bring your face back? Oh, hang on. Let me just bring us all up uh, on screen. Yeah, so it's just us on screen now. We're bringing, we're bringing your pictures back up in a second just, just to finish off. But I'll just um, mention a couple of other questions. Um, Daniel was asking, I can answer this if you like, can you save your layer structure, the names and layer options, um, which I'm afraid you can't at the moment because I'm sure that would be useful for you guys as well to just have a layer stack that you could always open up. Um, yeah. It is actually possible if you know anything about Apple Script, um, but that doesn't help you if you're on a, a PC. Uh, so, oh, that's my Alexa is just going off in the background, if you happen to hear I that. <laughs> I do think it's helpful though, um, and I, I guess I forgot to mention this, the, one, the layers that don't have a particular mask or the layers that aren't for one particular photo, I'll obviously copy and apply that to the whole set, um, just so I can yeah, kind of yeah. identify 
I, There's nothing to stop you copy pasting your layers across to to other shots and everything. So sure. yeah. yeah, but the naming and everything also stays the same if it's yeah, in there. Exactly. The, so that's something we can work on, I'm sure. Um, Jay well, was asking, sure. um, what's the best way to get the soft look in your images? That's you. Yeah. <laughs> straight to straight the to best branding. way to get soft look. Um, yeah. Wow. Okay. That's an interesting, for me, um, I think the softness is in the brightness, um, and the overall tones. Mm -hmm. Um, when people tell me, Oh, your, your work looks really soft. They're not talking really about the focus. So for, for me and my style, that comes like, how do I add like an airy vibe? And I think that that is, um, not doing too much like saturation, not doing too much contrast, mm -hmm. um, really making sure that like skin is soft and like, there's no, um, yeah, too, too much clarity, like, just making sure that things overall are um, are really subtle. I guess, I guess the other thing to follow up on that is just lighting. You know, if you mm. if you start with soft lighting, it'll give. It, it depends how you're asking that question. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the best answer. No, no, I, sure. I think fix I, it in, <laughs> fix it with the lighting, not necessarily. I, I think that. both are important. Yeah. Yeah. And last question from William. Uh, he said, "Do you do you keep the standard Nikon color pro profile in Capture One, or do you change it?" Um, I do, but I, like I said, I almost always will use the, the white balance, um, color picker just to double check, make sure. And, and the um, advanced color editor, you're, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. I guess you're not necessarily producing like for like scientific colors. You're always editing. No, and I'm extent. always having a play too. So it's, it's never like a hard science. Like I must have the, the correct thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Actually, more often than not, I'll add a ton of blue just because why not? Like, <laughs> Exactly. I, I remember I did a webinar ages ago where I edited one of your shots. I tried to match your Photoshop shot in uh, Lightroom. So, um, yeah. uh, sorry, Lightroom? What am I talking about? Oh, wow. In Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to match uh, your Photoshop edit in Capture One. So there we go. I was watching yeah. Adobe broadcasts earlier, so that's probably why I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Checking the competition, yeah. Um, cool. Shall we bring up your last two shots on screen just so we can see see yeah. how you both finish the edit, and I'll um, I'll bring them up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like a before after. Yeah, exactly. Or I mean, more or less. Yeah, you could just put them up. We, side we by got side. pretty close. Well, actually, I guess I overdid it a little bit on this one. It's, but, it's almost um, impossible to match. Uh, <laughs> An edit, isn't it, day to day? So, so that is quite for me. That's like a huge difference. Yeah. <laughs> I know it might look really subtle to um, everyone else, but this is the before after. Cool. Maybe uh, and for mine and, and looking at this, there are things that I would adjust, especially on color. Um, but before and after, so. A little heavier than I would normally go, but yeah. There we go. Perfect. Nice one. Yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you very much for joining us today. That was bang on 30 minutes, so top marks for uh, uh, timekeeping as well. Um, one more thing that we can mention is that we also have a Capture One group, uh, which is managed by who? That's me. Yes, <laughs> by Emily. So, <laughs> <laughs> Capture One uh, Creative Lab. We can put the, the links for it up in uh, the comments on, on Facebook and uh, YouTube as, as well. So we can throw those up so people uh, know how to find that as well. And we're also put up some links for some promos that are running at the moment. So we've got 25% off uh, on Capture One Pro. And there's also offers on upgrades and also a spring offer on our Fuji and Sony versions as well. So now's the time to get Capture One if you're interested. Uh, so go along and have a look at the store and um, and uh, check it out. And you're very welcome to share your work with us as well. So we have the hashtag edit with us uh, and the Facebook group link has gone up on there as well. And I'll be back myself, uh, sadly no guests, on Monday and Wednesday next week uh, to do some more live editing at the same time as well. Nothing on Friday as it's Easter and I'm sure we all had travel plans, um, but uh, we're going to be at home, I'm sure, like you two as well. Yeah. yeah. Someone was concerned that you were sitting close to each other, but you haven't left the apartment for what, like uh, yeah. two weeks now or something? We, it's been over, it's been like almost three weeks. Yeah. yeah. So we are good quarantine people. Exactly. Yeah. And even though we're in Brooklyn, we've been like 
very like yeah. not going outside yeah. <laughs> like but what is sunlight yeah. <laughs> the most we've gone outside is like to our roof and we like look out and we're like we remember what it was like, like to, to be, be outside, outside <laughs> at the street level exactly so there we go so the only thing left to do is give you a round of applause with a cheesy sound effect so you won't hear it but everyone else will <laughs> and that's the end of that so thanks for joining us again uh, check out the comments for all the links um, and uh, yeah, please join our Facebook group and look up Brandy and Emily on their Instagram accounts as well. So thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. See you later. Bye. Take care. Bye.